Hi, I'm back for another vlog video uh, here on another hot summer night in Toronto. Uh, if you're a subscriber watching or if you've just stumbled upon this, thank you. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this channel. I'm always trying to put more uh, fashion history time lapse videos together, and in the meantime, just going to come on and talk about things to do with uh, subcultural uh, style and art. Um, sometimes music, sometimes fashion, uh, mostly goth, but also and beyond. This time it's a beyond. I'm going to review a documentary film about the fashion designer Vivian Westwood. I'm going to tell you uh, what I thought about the movie, if I think that you should see it, uh, what there is to learn in the film, and just gives me an opportunity to talk about uh, Vivian Westwood in general and why I think that she's interesting and important. Um, stay through to the end for what will likely be a bit of a rant about some stuff she's been doing lately. But uh, first, let's just start with um, a little background on Vivian Westwood and why you might care. To me, the ground zero is British punk rock. Vivian Westwood is one of the original creators of the punk rock style of the 1970s. And I say one of because, of course, uh, there's no one inventor of punk music or fashion. It is a, a collective expression of many people's imagination. But Vivian Westwood uh, and her partner at the time, Malcolm McLaren, were the ones who kind of bottled it, uh, packaged it, and sold it. So the sort of stereotypical punk style that you see in my uh, goth style videos uh, and uh, most photographs, uh, museum exhibitions about that time, have the McLaren Westwood look. The plaid bondage trousers, ripped uh, muslin shirts, safety pins, political slogans, these kinds of things. Um, they did this out of an independent shop on King's Road in London that for me was kind of like a mythological place when I first started uh, reading about punk rock. I wasn't there. I'm too young to have been around in the late 70s for that. Most of what I know has come from watching interviews and also this book, um, which I read again recently after seeing the film, called uh, Vivian Westwood, An Unfashionable Life. It's unauthorized, it's very thick, um, kind of warts and all, a uh, huge biography of her life. Um, so what I think was interesting about that time was not just that they dressed the Sex Pistols and that made sort of the punk style um, popular, but how provocative it was, how confrontational. The slogans that appeared on a lot of their shirts were um, obscene at times, uh, taking images of the Queen or Jesus and subverting them. Uh, they used swastikas uh, sometimes, and this was just to push the buttons of conservative Britain uh, in the 1970s. I love that you can make people angry just by wearing clothes. I think that's why I was always drawn to what Vivian Westwood was doing. Um, another layer to that was that they used to make latex clothes back then, and I love latex, and even today in 2018, it's considered sort of a fringe or fetish thing, but you could go to their shop on King's Road, which was called Sex, they weren't hiding it, and get like a rubber catsuit. And if you weren't quite into that, you could get a t-shirt that had a zipper over the nipples or that said perv or, you know, just these things that sort of like pushed sexuality uh, out onto the street. And again, uh, that's why I have found her to be a very interesting person from that time in subcultural style history. But she didn't stay there. She didn't stay with Malcolm McLaren. She got bored of him. And she didn't stay doing um, punk rock style either. Um, her first catwalk show was not punk. It was pirates. And this became part of the new romantic wave that would follow punk that I think is kind of parallel to what was going on with early goth. And it was colorful and it was tailored. She was taking like references from history and sort of adapting them with her sort of asymmetrical um, cutting style that's become her trademark. So, uh, and I think she was maybe 40 uh, the year of her like first runway show, which I also find inspirational. So um, she didn't just stay with punk and sort of milk that. She kept evolving and doing collections that had um, corsets and velvet and 
you know, over the years, it's not always something that I would wear, but it's always been something that is interesting and uh, changing. To that end, she has become a global brand. There are Vivian Westwood shops all around the world. So to see a woman uh, who is now 77, in her 70s, um, you know, who came from this sort of like street style background, uh, go to the runways, become like a you know, very respected, uh, influential fashion designer, and then to have this business empire, I think is also inspiring, all while wearing like crazy makeup and crazy hair, just being like this outlandish, loud woman. Finally, the shoes. Uh, Vivian didn't just do clothes, she's also done really interesting shoes, going way back to the 70s when she put spikes on stilettos. Uh, her most famous are from the 90s and they are the extreme platform heels. When I did um, the golf shoe event at the Bata Shoe Museum last year with Adriana, uh, the thing I was like super stoked about was getting to see those black patent spiked Vivian Westwood platforms with the 12 inch heels. Guys, they are crazy. Can't imagine wearing them. I can't imagine wearing the collection she does with Melissa which is uh, like a recycled, actually I don't know if it's recycled, but it's like a rubber shoe line I think from Brazil um, and she makes some really cool stuff with them. So these are all the reasons why I wanted to see punk icon activist the Vivian Westwood documentary by Lorna Tucker. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes access. Lorna worked with uh, Vivian for many years shooting this film and I think if you're interested in the fashion industry, the inner workings of a global fashion brand, you will really uh, find this fascinating. As an overall biography of her life, it didn't really dive deep enough uh, in my view. First of all, if you're interested primarily in the punk years, she doesn't want to talk about it. She says it outright She's so over it and so bored. So, you know, stories about her and Malcolm and the shop and the, you know, her motivation back then come from other people. I do like the scenes in the V&A Museum, the Victorian Albert Museum in London, where the curators bring out some of her famous uh, original pieces and describe them and why they were revolutionary or important to fashion. Um, but really, like, I'd want to hear those stories from me and herself and, she's just not into it. So we move on and we talk a lot about the company and we see her relationship with her current husband who's this like crazy flamboyant creative fashion student now partner um, half her age and they have this wonderful romance that's that's fun to watch on screen but then very tense um, scenes of them working together trying to make modern collections and you see the growth of the brand and struggling a little bit with um, with that, especially as Vivian becomes more interested in activism, which is um, the third part of the film. She goes to the Arctic, I think. She's going to see the toll of climate change on glaciers and on all of us. And everyone else is wearing like North Face and other like reasonable clothes that you would wear uh, to go to the Arctic. And she's wearing like Vivian Westwood clothes, <laughs> um, her own clothes. And I think Overall, that's my favorite part of the film, is just seeing this outrageous, flamboyant woman in her 70s um, not giving, like, a care for what other people might think of her appearance. She's got wild hair and does crazy things with her eyebrows, dresses like in asexual clothes sometimes. You can see her riding around uh, the streets of London on um, her bicycle in ridiculous platform shoes. Like, I just love that she is out there and existing, right? Um, and I walked out of the, the film thinking like, yes, I, I want there to be more women like this in the world. Um, but again, it lacked a bit, like when they talked about her activism, you don't see that she's putting her money where her mouth is. And I don't know, maybe she is, but the documentary doesn't say, for example, cover, you know, her company trying to deal with their carbon footprint or like, you know, sweatshops or, or just like sort of like negative side of the global fashion industry. She has always um, encouraged people to buy good clothes, not cheap clothes that last a long time, which is obviously better than a fast fashion brand, but um, I would have liked to have seen, uh, you know, something about how her her current philosophies against fracking and, and you know, environmentalist concerns about climate change 
manifested in her own business affairs. Also, there's not enough clothes in this film, not enough archival of like amazing runway shows. Like I wanted it to be more of a feast of her creations. I don't see that. I know you can get on YouTube, but um, I thought it should have been part of the film. So uh, if you want to learn more about her, I do think that you should watch the film, but it's not like a huge recommend from me. So having said all of that, um, I wanted to end with sort of what's happening in the sort of world of Vivian Westwood branding now. Um, she was in the news recently for her fall collection, um, plagiarizing or pirating other people's designs. And that is not shocking to me into itself because she's always had like a bricolage style, been influenced by other people. But it's 2018 now, not 1978. And just like bands cannot sample freely without paying, you know, royalties to the people who created those samples, I don't think you can just take from other brands and put them on your clothes and think no one is going to notice. And what bothered me actually even more than that was she took this t-shirt design that said we sell big sizes up to like 5x and put it on a skinny model and threw some other things on it and i'm like but you don't sell big sizes at all i know that's why i don't have any of your clothes <laughs> vivian westwood because i'm a size 14 and um your clothes doesn't really go that high even though the average size of a north american woman is 12 so it's not like crazy or anything um like most high fashion brands they make small sizes fine that's your business but then to take a shirt that is kind of making a statement about plus sizes put it on a skinny model and throw it on the runway like i don't get it i don't get what you're trying to say um if you want to be revolutionary, make clothes for large bodies. Um, learn how to tailor for large bodies. Service that market and don't be afraid to have your design seen on bodies that are, you know, stereotypically not as attractive um, to the outside world. I would love to see that happen. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to put on the one thing that I do own from Vivian Westwood because it fits me, which are my sunglasses. And, um, say goodbye <laughs> for now hopefully you've learned something and uh, enjoyed some of the pictures i will be back uh, soon in other videos i want to talk about corsets i want to talk um about uh, music books uh, that i want you to read and i still need to do that video about emo so thanks for watching and i will see you soon bye